Yeah. One more API. <laughs> it's a short one, though. And if you're already familiar with fetch on the web, this is pretty much the same thing. So in React Native, um, XML HTTP request has been totally re-implemented. And so any uh, networking library that works on the web should more or less work in React Native. So you can use whatever you prefer, Axios, SuperAgent, whatever. Often in React Native, you'll see people using fetch directly, but it's really just preference. Uh, fetch is really pretty simple as APIs go, at least in its most basic case. You just say fetch and then put a URL. That defaults to a get request. If you want to change the type of request to post or put or whatever, you can do that. You can specify headers and the JSON body. I'll show a snack for this. I don't think it's worth spending that much time on, so I won't add anything to the sample app. But I'll send this out. So here is a simple example of using fetch to grab JSON. Fetch is asynchronous, returns a promise, so you can await it. So a common pattern when working in React Native and using fetch is to record the loading state and whether or not an error has occurred. And so this is useful so that you can show first a loading spinner, an activity indicator, before the data is ready. And then if an error occurs, you can show an error message. So you'll see in component will map, when I try to fetch the JSON and then um, parse the JSON, if an error occurs, I simply say loading is false and error is true. So just show an error message. Only if an error does not occur do I say loading is false and actually save the posts for rendering. So if we see what this looks like, loaded pretty quickly, there's just a list of uh, basically lorem ipsum. And the rendering of the list isn't that important. But you'll see how it renders kind of interesting. We have posts, loading, and air. If we're loading, we just show an activity indicator. Um, it's not clear what I'm talking about by activity indicator. It's just these little spinny icons in the center. So this is a built-in, works for iOS and Android. You'll normally show this before your data loads. If there's an error, right now I just show a text message in the center of the screen, failed to load posts. And otherwise, if it's not loading and there's no error, then I render the actual posts. This is a pretty common pattern. Um, if you're familiar with Redux or whatever, you normally won't fetch directly from inside your components, and you'll normally save all of your data elsewhere and just pass it in. Um, but even in Redux, it's common to say loading and air and manage your state that way. Questions about fetch or networking? Yeah. The data is fetched on the JavaScript side, right? Yeah. Uh, the JavaScript, that's a good question. I want Brent to answer. He's definitely more of like the React Native core contributor. Believe the XML HTTP stuff is implemented on the native side, so everything will actually happen on the native side. So for example, you won't be able to like watch the network requests in the uh, Java, in like the Chrome inspector, because they're just, they're not even happening on the JavaScript side. I believe it crosses over the bridge, but yeah. Yes, that's true. OK. So then do you have to whitelist in iOS all of the domains that you're going to call out? No. <laughs> <laughs>